As you all know, the evolution videos are some of my favorite ones, and it's been a while since we've tackled one. Luckily, the other day, I came across someone called Matrix Discovery. I know, I know, the imagination knows no bounds. And they were discussing how evolution is a lie and how buildings are melted. Bit of a weird one. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. So this week on Tin Four Tuesday, we are once again looking at those pesky evolution deniers. Something which usually occurs because it flies in the face of almost every single religion out there. Will today be any different? Let's find out. Just a quick video on evolution. This is what we're taught in school. Everything came from a fish, right? This fish right here spawned <laughs> other species of animals like the reptiles the mammals such and such but there's no evidence other than what they tell us you know in the in the history books and the fake uh, evidence that they plant right fake evidence that we plant right okay well i don't believe that the recurrent laryngeal nerve is something that we can plant for those of you that don't know the recurrent laryngeal nerve is a nerve that goes from the brainstem to the larynx except it takes a bit of a detour all the way down under the aorta and back up to the larynx. Why would it do that? If we are designed as so many people believe, then what is the point in that? Well, it turns out that this is an inconvenient evolutionary hangover from our fish ancestors. Because the heart in fish is so close to the brain and they have no neck, it was not an issue. But as we evolved and necks got longer, the nerve was caught under the aorta and it hasn't found its way out again. Spare a thought for giraffes who have a recurrent laryngeal nerve of almost five meters long. Um, another thing is we've dug around everywhere around the world, right? We've dug just about everywhere, these mining pits. They don't, they don't, they don't discover any animal bones, right? There's no animal bones, there's, no, there's nothing. Um, well, as one example, the largest coal mine in South America has paleobiologists finding plant fossils in there. And this is a nodosaur fossil discovered in an oil sand mine in Canada. Need I go on? What, 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 you can see what these really are is, is, is giant buildings they're digging into, right? But that's a whole different thing, but... Whoa, 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 whoa. Giant buildings. Just slipping in another conspiracy theory there. Unbelievable. Let's go back to evolution. Okay, so I was watching a documentary. It was showing a giraffe, an elephant, and a rhino. All right, so supposedly all these animals, uh, most of these grew up in the same area, like Africa, right? And they tell us that evolution is based on the environment. Um, the, 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 the greater, the, the species that uh, moves on is the one who, who can, you know, uh, defend itself, uh, feed itself, uh, whatever the best, right? So why is these things existing differently, okay? Look at the giraffe, the giant neck, right? The giant legs, right? The giant body. But then you look at this one, the elephant. Short neck, short legs, relatively short legs compared to this, right? And a gigantic body. Sorry, are you saying here that all animals in Africa should all look the same? Africa is a continent with hundreds of different ecosystems. Different species suit different habitats. Now, for example, the common ancestor of the giraffe and the elephant lived between 50 and 60 million years ago. Now, that species no longer exists, of course. It actually branched off to form the orders Proboscidea and Artiodactyla taxonomic orders of the elephant and the giraffe, respectively. And since then, some species of elephant, for example, have gone extinct, leaving only three living species that we know of, and one of them doesn't even live in Africa. It's completely different than this thing. Look at the, look at the difference. And then you have the rhino, which is very low to the ground, no neck, basically no neck, just like the elephant, and it has a giant horn, like a one horn at the front. So how are these species different in the same area. They live basically in the same area, competing for the same food. They're all vegetarians, right? They're all competing for the same food, but yet they're all looking different. Yes, because rhinos are absolutely competing for the leaves of the acacia tree, aren't they? 
My point is, there is different vegetation and different habitats. All three of these species fit into their environment, and if those environments cross over, then so be it. That's how evolution is a lie, folks. Evo well, it's obvious that evolution is a lie, um, because dinosaurs never existed, because the Earth is not what you think it is. Earth is not a ball. Earth is not 63 billion years old, or whatever years old, right? Um... We live in a matrix, basically. Yes, the Earth being billions of years old and a ball is way less believable than a giant simulated virtual reality construct of the world created by artificial intelligence to keep the minds of the human race under control whilst they serve as organic batteries. And I believe these are experimentation by the creator, by the matrix, right? Just like us, we're, we're experimentation. I think that's what it is. Um... There's no other explanation for it. There's no such thing as evolution. Evolution is a, is a hoax. Um, just, just think about it for folks. Just think about it. Why are these things differently, completely differently, completely designed differently, but they live in the same environment, especially the giraffe and the elephant, right? They're completely different. Look at the short neck, this one, long neck on this one. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's BS. And this guy has a trunk. Why does it, like, if the trunk is so successful, then why do these, these, why don't every animal have a trunk, right? Well, the human brain is successful. Why doesn't every animal have a brain that's sophisticated? But then a dog has a better sense of smell than us. So why can't we have a sense of smell as good as a dog's? And a hawk can see for miles. Ah, forget it. Give everyone everything. Obviously, this is not how evolution works. And once again, with these types of video, the detractors of evolution don't understand the mechanisms of it. Because, you know, a trunk allows you to take water easily, uh, grab things easily, right? The dexterity of this thing is amazing, right? Then why does all the animals have this trunk, right? They don't. You're right. If only there was a way for giraffes to reach their food, seen as though they don't have a trunk. I asked my eight-year-old this. Here's what he said. Hey, buddy, so you know how um, elephants have got trunks to yeah. reach their food in trees and stuff? Um, giraffes haven't got trunks. How do they reach their food? Uh, because they have long legs. Long legs? And what else have they got that's long? A long neck. A long neck, yeah. They can reach the food with a neck, can't they? Yeah. Yeah, well done. An eight-year-old. Um, look at this. Look at the size, the size of the nose. This tiny nose versus this tiny, giant nose, right? It's, it's, a, it's all BS, folks. It's all BS. Um, a lot of people have already debunked evolution. Even in Darwinism, that's also all BS. They tell you like the, the the most successful species moves forward while the unsuccessful one moves backwards. But then why do these things exist in the same environment, right? Yeah, it's just a quick video. I was watching a documentary. I saw this. Wait a minute. Why do these things exist in the same environment? They're competing for the same vegetation. Repeating your points over and over and over do not make them more valid, buddy. Some coherence, please. But they all completely look different. You said what the scientists, our so-called scientists, would tell us: "Oh, it's just the way it is. You know, evolution is. You know, it just this happens to be that way, right?" Another thing is they don't have any evidence of these things. You know, the ancestries of these things. They they'll just show you pictures of oh, an animal. You know, stretching his neck out. Then the next one will have a bigger neck. The next one will have a big neck. But there's no actual evidence of these. You know, the ancestries of these things, right? This link below here is a paper that talks specifically about the fossil evidence and stage of neck evolution of the giraffe. I mean, you're just not looking, buddy. There's no evidence of these things either, or these things. They'll tell you this is, uh, you know, <laughs> related to the triceratops. <laughs> triceratops. Okay, let's think about that for a second. The dinosaurs. They tell us that the dinosaurs completely wiped out 63 million years ago, but yet the answers to the dinosaurs are the birds, right? The birds. <laughs> The birds are the ancestors of the dinosaurs. Then, then why are the birds existing? Then you told us that the dinosaurs all you know were wiped out by the big, a big um, meteorite that came from space, right? <laughs> so, if all the dinosaurs are dead, then how come these birds exist? Because they were already evolving into birds before the asteroid hit, genius. Birds evolved from one type of dinosaur, theropods. Probably because their smaller size allowed them to adapt quicker to the ever-changing environments on Earth at that time. They tell you all these birds uh, are existing because of the dinosaurs. They're all the ancestors of the dinosaurs, right? <laughs> it's all BS. Oh God! You just have to use some. You, you, you just have to use some thinking. You don't need a you know a big brain to figure this out. 
just use some critical thinking here, folks. No, you don't need a big brain, which doesn't stand well for you, does it? Let's leave Matrix Discovery here and possibly revisit him again soon. He has undeniable proof that we haven't gone to the moon, don't you know? Dear, oh dear. Right, well, we are all done and dusted for another Tim for Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it today, consider subscribing to the channel. We are on that march to the half a million subscribers. We're going to get there before the end of this year. Uh, and of course, if you really, really enjoyed it, hit that like button too. I've been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a great week. And I'll see you on Friday for a flatter TikToker special. See you then.